Hey guys, this week on Awesome Cast, we check out how double robotics are combining iPads and Segways to have you be there creepily. Uh, we also look at how you can recycle your old Android devices for the cheap cast uh, to be useful again. And we take a look at the Samsung Smart PC. Chilla has it here in studio, and it is a steal and a pretty sweet little device. All that, so much more, Awesome Cast. This edition of Awesome Cast is brought to you by. PittsburghOnVideo.org. Check out the best videos from Pittsburgh all in one place. PittsburghOnVideo.org. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line advertising. I'm getting awesome. You're getting awesome. We're getting awesome. Yeah, that's what I said now. It's that time of the week where we get geeky and, uh, and and talk tech and talk social media, talk internet. It's the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg here in the studios in Pittsburgh, PA. With me uh, on the couch once again is Chilla at What's Chilla up? on the Twitters once again. I said that already. Uh, how you doing this week? Not too bad. How are you doing? Uh, apparently, I should have had coffee. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, but we'll get the excitement level up. I got some really co cool topics. It looks like you got some really cool topics going on, too. So let's get right into it. Hey, if you're new to the Awesome Cast, we do this every Tuesday night, live.sorgatronmedia.com. You can join us in the chat room. Let us know what you think is cool, what you think is awesome, and we'll be able to talk about that. And, and comment on the stuff we do talk about here on the show. Uh, you can drop us a line to contact at awesomecast.com if you want to use them emails. Uh, hit up Google+, Facebook, and at Awesome awesome cast on twitter uh with any comments about the show and again let us know your awesome thing through the week and, and we'll share it on here or and share it with uh with the awesome cast nation here uh so let's get right into it this is how we start the show we we, we talk about what is our awesome thing of the week and chili do you mind if i go go first on this one definitely go i for am it. really really excited on this one so 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 you you heard the same thing we, we listened to twit this week this week mm -hmm. in tech right um the Godfathers of Technology uh, podcasting, you could say. Well, they had a new toy and, uh, rolling around the studios. I heard this on audio, so I had to go. I had to look at the, their video to see like how that went. Well, we got music going. But apparently, uh, we're one step closer to the robot takeover. Uh, so this is from Double Robotics. If you go to doublerobotics.com, if you're on the audio podcast, you can check this out, too. So think, uh, again, if you're audio, think a segue. Um, the high technology that is a Segway with a giant pole and you put an iPad on that and then you can remote presence into the iPad. It shows your face in rather creepy... Uh, they kept saying this is like Sheldon from Big Bang Theory. I don't know the reference. Uh, but i I never seen that episode, at least. But it keeps me, me thinking about the screens from the 80s cafe in uh, Back to the Future 2. So, yeah, right? What was the, what was the movie with... Um, there was some movie where where they actually were like lying. Pretty much everyone pretty much went inside their house, lied in a bedroom. Circuits? Yes. Yeah. See, it reminds me of that. <laughs> so maybe so not robot. I'm gonna takeover. have my surrogate iPad Segway a little dude here, kind of rolling around, and 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 I'll see if I can pull up the. Uh, I'll, I'll see if I can pull up the Twit. Actually, they have the Twit video right here on the site. Uh, where they were just rolling around the studio, rolling around out front of the studio and everything. Uh, it was pretty entertaining. Yeah, but but I, I'm trying to think now. now okay, it's a cool idea. Um, I would love to play with it. And this is the cheapest uh, telepresence system uh, at about 2500 bucks for the set, setup. You know, not including the iPod, iPad and whatever. Um, but still, that's pretty cool. That's 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 still attainable if you're like in a business that that this made sense for you. I'm not entirely sure what sort of business this makes sense. I'm not sure in. about the business, but what about schools? Schools? I you could think? see a lot of schools picking this up where kids that can't necessarily always make it to school for health related issues. True. I could really see that being them feeling like they're really part of the classroom mm -hmm. in that instance. And I know they were showing it off pretty good on Twit. They they had I, during the show they had somebody from like Atlanta controlling the thing. And I, yeah, he gave he gave logins in for it. I think the one interesting thing was is that it ran out of battery. 
It did. So I wonder how long. Well, I, they didn't plug it in. They took it right out of the box. Okay. So you never get a full charge when you get you take something out of the box. Like, and there it is rolling around if you're on video through their studio. Uh, and it, and it, I guess it works pretty well. Uh, <laughs> the thing I was impressed with is the, the arm actually telescopes. So if you're controlling so it, and you it walk, and if, if you walk up to someone that's a lot taller than you, a lot shorter than you, whatever, mm -hmm. you can actually move the arm up and down. I'm impressed with how it kind of levels. I'm interested to know how, why it doesn't tip forward or backwards. Segway it, technology, yeah. man. But the Segway, you lean forward and lean Is back. It? Well, in this case, to move forward yeah, and, and backwards. In this case, I thought it was more of a lean back kind of. Well, no, it's straight it doesn't up and look down. Look like it's that's it leaning anywhere. <laughs> Uh, those are that's great they, yeah they had they had a lot of fun with this one um i don't know I, I, you know what it, could you see like you're doing tours with this thing could you see like you know granny couldn't make it so so we're gonna have her telepresence into the to christmas uh kind of thing but if you're doing that wouldn't you just set up a mobile device stationary? Does you kind of granny yeah, yeah. really I need mean, to really, get up isn't that what this is for? Which, yeah, isn't that what glass is for at this point? I know, I know, I heard a really good story about uh, uh, somebody like they, you know, grandma couldn't go on the family trip, so they took her on via hangout through right. this thing, you know, and, and that's a pretty cool idea. And this is uh, ideally, this is going to be a more attainable on the consumer level kind of device in Google Glass. Um, but this is definitely this is for higher end. See, the, the, twenty five hundred bucks a pop. That's for businesses but this is why i'm saying if it's for schools too because think mm -hmm. about it kids move from class to class so this fills that gap the the student can mo actually move with other classmates when i and i don't know what grade level that it is at now where yeah where you're actually changing classroom to classroom and there's different teachers teaching different subjects so you could be there going through that flow but you're doing it from home because mm -hmm. you're I don't know, got mono or something, or, right. or, or something else that's debilitating. Uh, that could be interesting. That could really be interesting. Really, but I mean, I know some kids have to be in the hospital mm -hmm. a certain period of time. I mean, they don't. It's <clears throat> it's not someone bringing home homework and them trying to figure it out. Yeah, it's I can still keep up with the classes I'm in, where I'm, what I'm, what's going on in the classroom setting, versus. Jimmy down the street brought home my book with my homework assignments, and I have to piecemeal it back together. Yeah. Or hope someone around the house knows how to do this. So uh, to, to, to answer your questions maybe a little bit here, the site does go on here to say, Intelligent Balance, Dynamic Sensor. Oh, I hit the video, son of a uh dynamic sensor fusion algorithms combine gyroscope and accelerometer feedback to keep the robot staple at human uh height uh with just a 10 inch wheelbase hmm so there you go uh you know, then they, as you said you saw the arm goes up and down uh they do have kickstands like when you first the when they first got it they had to put these kickstands up so it didn't fall over so it, i i you know and it, i guess it only the works and i don't know much about segways but i guess it only really works until you know, you get it on and motorized and moving and iPad up okay. there and everything. So uh, at least that seems to be the, the case. Uh, how long does the battery last? The internal rechargeable lithium-ion battery uh, provides up to eight hours of normal use. So that could be a school day in the long run. Does it also... Do I plug in the iPad separately or... I'm uh, guessing when it goes in into its charging dock... It also charges the iPad. How do I charge the battery and how quickly does it charge? Does it do in two hours? Uh, does double come with an iPad? No. Um, so if it doesn't come with an iPad, I'm guessing you have to plug the iPad. Yeah, it doesn't separately. really say. I, I, I didn't see anywhere where, like, I, it looked like the iPad slid into this. There was this holder and it slid into mm -hmm. that, and this was on the pole. I don't think there was a connector. Well, no, there has to be a connector, isn't there? Because that's how because that's how the iPad communicates with it. Why does the iPad even have to? Oh, because the iPad is a control point. The iPad is receiving the information from the website software, whatever, and then that is changing every you know relaying everything to the wheelbase and making that thing go. Yeah, so I'm guessing so it's really the brain. So there, yeah. there does have to be a connector. Um, but I wonder if it would power that as well. well I wonder if it, it almost charges the iPad. The iPad's going to give its 
eight hour, ten hour battery yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. You have like you have both. Yeah. You know? you have, maybe maybe a tag team is a battery life. Obviously, I think you could put a bigger battery in this to push that off to the to the iPad. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, that's pretty cool. Uh, so yeah. So it, it's again, I, I'm kind of it, this is like kind of like a Google Glass thing where like I want to see what people do with this thing now. You know, is this something we're going to end up seeing like rolling down down the street downtown now? See, I don't think you're going to. I don't know. That it, seems it is like a an very odd specific. What's the use case for that? Exactly. Like where, when would I need? They call it teleconferencing systems. Um, oh, well, here's some of the ideas. Here's some of the ideas. Offices with multiple locations use double to, uh, to communicate with remote teams. Remote workers feel more connected with their colleagues. So it's that idea. They're talking about school campuses. They're talking about retail stores as a mobile kiosk, giving customers more information about the products. Think about that. Maybe maybe it's like the, you get more information, and it's like, hey, they're over here, and you follow the iPad. It, well, so why? instead of a customer service from India, you have your kiosk is going to talk to you <laughs> oh, from India. <laughs> And then they're going to get lost in the store. They're going, to, they're going to have to use a Google indoor map to figure out where they're at. <laughs> uh, technology <laughs> solves problems and creates a million other ones, right? Yeah. I, I Yeah. I, can I get... What happens if... It, so it's rolling down the street. What happens if it rains? <laughs> You have short circuit. You have these things short circuited all over the all over the, <laughs> just, the, the sidewalk. There was a school field trip, <laughs> and then and then it rained, and then there's like ten of these things lined up like a ghost town, like along the street. <clears throat> uh, I don't know. Um, I want to throw an awesome thing of the week honorable mention this week because um, I had an incident on Friday. Chachi there was there with me. Uh, I, I I dropped my phone. I did not cry. I want. I and amazingly, I was not shocked by it. Have you have you broken a phone? So I have dropped. I dropped my phone, and it, nothing broke. No, except, don't get me wrong. I I dropped it multiple times. Oh yeah, but I two days it. later, it stopped vibrating. Oh, so I was guessing that like the motor actually became dislodged or something along those lines. I took mm -hmm. it in to Apple. They're like, it's not the motor. It's not the connector. We ran tests on it, blah 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 blah. But we like you so much. Here's a free phone. <laughs> Is it, was was like, it one of those Ooh! where like I'm going to do something for you? Yes. Like they make it like I'm hooking you up here. Well, and they were hooking me up because mine was a retail unlocked phone. Oh wow! So it was six or seven twenty nine for the phone. <laughs> <laughs> that I paid out of pocket and no Apple Care on it and no Apple could, Care. Could you get Apple Care on an unlock like that? I don't know if you can. I don't see why not. Especially you, you, they sell unlock through Apple. So that's and that's who I bought it direct from. Yeah, I, that's yeah. who I got it you direct could, from. You couldn't you couldn't squeeze the extra hundred I, after yeah. all that. <laughs> well, and I think I, I was just over the one year. I was just over a one year mark. It was my 4s, mm -hmm. and um, luckily when it fell and hit the cement. And actually, this is the reason I, I almost ref normally I refuse to use earbud headphones when I'm moving around. I only use them at my desk because that's actually how it happened. I was trying to get my phone out of my pocket with headphones on and my hand, the, the cable got wrapped around my hand mm -hmm. and the iPad or the iPhone fell out of my hand, disconnected from the headphones, bounced, hit the curb and then bounced into the street. Oh, wow. No damage done to the phone, and no scratches, no nicks, no nothing. But like I said, um, well, I a was not nearly day or two as later. lucky. It, it fell off. We were on a shoot for Unsung with Chachi, and there it is right there. Nice crack down the side. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's a nice straight line. Well, it, there's it, it a, there is a little bit of a crack there's down. There's one across the, the, the mm -hmm. middle, too. And I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I, I wasn't mad. I was just like, hey, you know, I got one coming. In. I, the, the, I have new phones coming out any day now, right? I, I, worst case, I got like two months with this thing, right? Apparently, and I was like, I I didn't know about Apple. I forgot about Apple Care Plus. I didn't think I even had it. What is it? Well, uh, I'll get to that. I'll get to that. So, so I'm sitting there, and we, well, apparently through the er, throughout the evening, I audibly sighed every time I looked at my screen. <laughs> uh, so much so that Missy uh, scheduled an appointment with uh, Apple with the, at the Mac or the Apple Store the next morning. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, I looked up that night and I, I okay, Apple Care Plus is was an upgrade to Apple Care for phones and everything where you actually do have incident insurance. Because before, if you know, I've dropped it in water before and went to an Apple store because I was in New York City and I was like, oh God, I need a new phone. And it's back with the 3GS. I had to pay 200 bucks on the spot. I mean, you know, again, it's not the 600, mm -hmm. but they give you a break. And I used to have to drop that same $200 on it to get a replacement. Um, the same thing would have been the case here, but now that they have the Apple Plus thing, it you get two incidents and you, have, you only get to pay $50. Not bad. Not bad. But you at have all. to have existing Apple Care. But you have to have the existing Apple Care Plus. Now here's the thing. I don't think I bought it. Cause I don't remember Apple Care Plus being a thing when I got my phone. I mine is I, I'm out of contract. I, it's been almost two years. Did you get it at I the AT&T Apple, store or did you get it at the Apple store? I most likely got I wonder if it's something where they had some kind of Secret class action lawsuit, <laughs> and then anybody you know, who didn't, who, and AT and T didn't inform. Now. I think it was through Apple. I think we okay. must have bought it through through like Apple itself, because it was one of those where I don't think we had to get the box or something, but we. Oh, I don't. I don't remember. It was so long ago. Because AT and T started that, and I think it was through some kind of class action. We went lawsuit into for, we went into some store. If it was AT and T <laughs> or Apple, I don't remember. Most likely Apple, I think. Well, uh, AT and T now has to offer insurance on phones that they didn't even sell. Really? And there was a grace when they kicked this off. There was a grace period where anybody who had anybody who was an AT and T customer could enroll in and you may be able to still do it you can enroll at any time in the protection plan okay well because so, so think about it i i had a resold iphone 4 mm -hmm. that was on that was unlocked and i had it on t-mobile i had the 4s that was retail unlocked that i had on t-mobile I brought both devices to AT&T originally. I upgraded to the 5 under contract. I still have my 4S mm -hmm. that, that Carl is using. They actually email me all the time saying, are you sure you don't want to insure this device? And I'm like, no. I'll just take it to the Apple store and take my chance. It is worth it in the long run. I mean, there, there was actually a good tweet by you know a friend of ours, Chick Chris, on uh, Twitter saying you know, she has a MacBook uh, and she's like, really, like the price you pay for the Macs are worth it for the... And now she's she's in a, she's got an Apple store right down in Squirrel Hill. So, yeah. I mean, it's really easy. Us, we're, we're fortunate down south, uh, South Hills Village here, uh, here in Pittsburgh. North Hills. Uh, North, North Hills, they got Park. it. Um, you know, my, my the one guy I work for, he's in Monroeville and, you know, even going into Squirrel Hill from there is, is, mm -hmm. is cake in comparison to other ways you would need to do this. Um... And there was even the, the one of the guys in there. He was from where was he from? He was from like like oh Burgettstown. So even okay. drive in from there, That's not you bad. still would rather do that because you gotta think how many times did you buy that warranty on that PC? You know, and I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't know what your your computer history is. You're probably like me and build them for a number of years. Yeah, uh, but still, whenever like your your parents or somebody got them, you're like get that Best Buy warranty. You know, in case it screws up. But anytime you had to take it back. Or you just didn't bother, or you didn't remember, mm -hmm. or you, you where's that slip at? You There's know? a third party insurance company, and I can't. I'll, I'll make sure I tag it for next week. I can't remember what it's called, mm -hmm. but they actually do third party insurance, and it's usually twenty five to fifty percent of the cost mm -hmm. of what like a Best Buy insurance insurance plan is mm -hmm. and they actually have better coverage but what do they do do you have to send it in <clears throat> do they send you a box or do they have like local um, people to deal with I, I don't think anybody else but see that's one thing you're getting out of Apple even like sometimes with Best Buy it's not that easy to get if you have some huge TV it's not that easy getting it back that's to Best true Buy. too that's true too yeah yeah it, it'd almost be easier to to put it in a box and have the post office come pick it up uh chachi says according to the, the uh squirrel hill store that, that there is no apple store or I, I, what's that? according to the site there is no apple store in squirrel hill it's shady side shady side i'm sorry they're like right next to each other right um but yeah it, but the, then i always i always consider like yeah there's a lot of apple stores 
but there's a lot of places that don't have an Apple store. When uh, my mother-in-law was out in Sacramento for another month, number of months, it was like an hour drive to get to one. Well, so what do they do in that case? Uh, you you call customer service, or you better have a good trip to in you to get out there, and hope they fix it the first time, which they didn't. What happens if you live in Nebraska? <laughs> then <laughs> you're not even buying Apple products but no, at that I mean, point. You know, I, well, you still have customer service. You still have, and I'm sure they have. You know, we haven't dealt with this because we live in the city. We're mm-hmm. very privileged in this regard. But I'm sure they have. A, 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 I don't know. Maybe there's somebody out there that does live out in the middle of nowhere. Like what? What? What happens when you call in? Are they really good about here's a box, send it in? You know, a, a, that kind of thing. Or here we'll send you one, send your bad one in the box. You know, so I would hope it would how, be that way because I wouldn't I've want to be dealt with Apple with nothing on the phone to use. My my entire Apple experience has been dealing with people face to face at that store. Well, that's the major selling point. It is. Like if I have a problem, I I make book a um, <laughs> thing at the Genius and Bar and call and it a Missy, day. Missy booked it on on the phone within like the hour. We go down there and uh, and and then there you go. And we did have a problem. The first one he tried loading, it like stopped like halfway through my iCloud backup. Mm-hmm. Like we went you know went got lunch, came back half an hour later. Uh, so I'm like, oh, I'll try it at home. I have Fios. If it's going to go, it's going to go here. You know, they're on Wi-Fi with how many things going on mm-hmm. in that store. Who knows? You know, and I got a pretty, I, I mean, I, I'm not paying anymore for iCloud, so it's not that big, but still probably significant. So what's your awesome thing of the week? My awesome thing of the week is Cheapcast. Cheapcast. And what it is, I, there's a link in there. Mm-hmm. Um, what it is, we were talking about Chromecast last week. If you have two um android devices and i think they went all the way back to gingerbread oh wow on their um on the app you can actually take one device and chromecast to the other device so if you had if you had an older tablet or an older phone that you could plug into a tv you you could then chromecast or i i look at this as if i'm in a conference in a conference setting where i don't have access to a chromecast or you want to share types of media across the room mm-hmm. this is where i definitely see this coming in handy like because i look at it as even at home today i don't have upstairs i don't have a roku i don't have an apple tv i don't have a chromecast i don't have anything up there but i have an extra tablet <laughs> so i can plug now, that this in. is a very specialized case it's like you know much like the uh you know the idea with chromecast well well you have to have a device to interface with this thing um and sure all of us have it but this is a very like oh i do have some of this right i have been running android devices for a while i got an extra thing lying around uh you know uh you know i know chachi's got a couple extra phones like i think he still has his g1 even mm-hmm. uh he could probably mess with this right right um so so for for the tech collectors like us, this is this where you're piecing this stuff is, together to try to get something done. Exactly, this is like me throwing Ubuntu on all my old machines around here and getting you know half the studio up and running. Right. right. Exactly. So. I, I just I just think it would be it's it's a it's an interesting concept, and I think it goes back to show what we were talking about last week. And the you know, do you always have to have the latest and greatest hardware? Or can they make advances on the software side and fill that gap? And I think this is one. One way to show that, hey, they can take software and emulate what this piece of hardware is, is doing. Mm-hmm. Not and, and to AJ's point last week, too, that it's not like the Chromecast is any magical, magnificent piece of hardware under the covers. But I, I just see where if, if you do have extra hardware laying around, heck, you could have an old HP touchpad that you threw Android on and you have something that you could Chromecast to or from. Mm-hmm. I just see, I just see it coming in handy. Sorry, I'm interfacing with the chat room over here. Not we we a do we have another awesome thing of the week, and I'm trying to see what the hook is on this one. Uh, but I no, actually read about this, but go ahead. You did. You did. Do you know a little bit about this one? I know a, enough to enough to probably make it myself sound stupid. <laughs> Perfect. Let's see where this so goes. So I heard. I heard. That this is that. This is Alex Cars in the chat room. He's here every week, and he, he often has an awesome thing of the week. And this is called Quip, apparently. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, it's somebody who was one of the original people involved in Facebook created an, a social 
version of pretty much Microsoft Word. Oh, so it's like I've seen something Google, about this recently. It's Google Docs, but it's it's really meant for kind of what what we use it for, going in simultaneously, editing stuff. But they have a comments panel on the left that's really nice, where you can say you can actually leave notes mm-hmm. to the group that's working on it. I think I, this did come up. I think this came up on one of the new shows that I watch. Um, and if, if this is the one I'm thinking, and let's see what Alex says here, uh, why, why he was into it. If this is the one I was thinking, I think the first thing I thought was show notes, right? Mm-hmm. Something you could share with everybody. But the problem with it is, this is like OS, iOS only, right? Yeah. So, great, we can all share notes, but as long as all of us have iPhones, you know? That's Which, even true. that, I don't even like the, the idea of the mobile. I like the idea I can pull up the notes on my iPad, on my, uh, on my, on my phone. I mean, I've done that. I've actually done that for notes for classes. And by the way, I found a really cool slideshow notes thing for glass. I'd I love to use that if I was doing fly sh- uh, slideshows this quarter. Um, what surprised me about this is it, I, and, and someone correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was the, the people that created this were original people involved in Facebook. The other thing that surprised me is, is that some of the original founders of YouTube mm-hmm. Went and created Mixbit. I, I play with Mixbit too. I which don't, is, but I can't remember if it actually posted the Twitter or not. <laughs> so. Which is another app that's so YouTube founders. It's another app that's only available to start with on iOS. Mm-hmm. Like what? It surprises me that all these companies or people from companies that tried to be on every platform, mm-hmm. they're really hitting. But, iOS but hard. But still, it makes sense to start with iOS, I think, still. I think, um, whereas, yeah, and actually, they do have an Android version now, it looks like, uh, on Mixbit, according to their website. Oh, do they? It is listed right there. Oh, there it is. Um, and, and back to the chat, Alex is actually saying, uh, what he's saying, he's also it's like a Google Drive with a to-do list feature uh, for Quip. And they're working on an Android version. There's actually a preview version out already. Cool. Um, but yeah, I, but I think it still makes sense to start with iOS. Um, how do I put this? Without, I think when you go with iOS first, you this is more of a tastemaker thing. You want the people that are going to be talking about things. But I see yes, the Google people are like the, the Google, early adopters. They're the glass. They're the, they're the explorers. Okay, yeah, yeah. But I, I still think, and this is this is like wildly over generalizing the cultures of each platform, um, at least the hardcore, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the, but your iOS people are the the iPhone people are more not techie people. So when they go and talk about something like a mix bit, like a quip, they're going to be talking on everybody's level. You get what I'm saying there? I get what you're saying. Yeah. Plus, I think there's something about the tools. I think it's something about if they're going to make money, they're going to go iOS first. That's been the case for that's, a long that's time. Definite, yeah. Uh, now, in these cases, these are all free apps, so I don't know what entirely they're doing there. Or well, is, I don't know about quip. I don't know if it's a free app or not. Actually. Quip's free. Is it free? I, I downloaded it and was playing around with okay, it. Okay, so free. I don't know. There may be one of those freemium i can yeah, i can up- but even if you're doing freemium i think mm-hmm. that still leans toward the ios side yeah people are more willing to definitely pay on the, yeah. on the ios side so and and chachi said that's something a fanboy says <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, with my side or your side I think, I, I think he's saying we're too leaning too far to we're, the iOS. We're both, hey, hey, my Android device. Hey, I'm wearing I'm wearing Android on my face for one. You're thing. wearing Android on your face. I'm wearing Android on my face. I have a tablet coming tomorrow. I actually canceled my Google Play order because when I ordered it alongside the Chromecast, it didn't matter when the next shipped, <laughs> and they can't split the order. So those Chromecasts have to be my thirty five dollar item needs to be. Uh, that's fine. That does okay. that all the time. Uh, <laughs> you got a glitch over here, uh, off camera. Uh, uh, my my thirty five dollar object was apparently more important to make sure it went along with my two hundred dollar object. I know it makes sense, right? So I just canceled the whole damn thing I well, got on Amazon. Well, maybe um, they figured you were ordering the Nexus so you could Chromecast. So why would you even need the Nexus? Because you didn't have your. They Chromecast should yet. already know I have this thing on my face too, because uh, <laughs> it's all through <laughs> Google, right? Uh, <laughs> I, and I was warned. AJ, I think, sat here last week and said, "Hey, they're a little wonky. Uh, they, they've, uh, you know, I, I've gotten uh, notes, got a just shipped email, and it shows up that day. 
You know, oh. it's like like that's the kind of thing. Uh, uh, so the play's not. They can't split seriously. What? I've had Amazon orders where I order something and then order something five minutes later and then order something the next morning and they all came in the same box. Well, what's the what's the thing where you can sell your stuff on Amazon and you actually ship it and it sits in a warehouse? Uh, yeah, it's one of those seller partner kind of situations. Why would you know why, ful- fulfillment by f- Amazon. fulfilled by Amazon? Yeah. Why doesn't Google just <laughs> Say, you know what, Amazon? Here's a warehouse yeah. that we already own. We'll we'll give you some floor space, and you f- just fulfill our do all of our ordering. It would make sense. It makes sense, you know. But that's more for the little guys like me. If I wanted to like take my DVDs and sell them mm-hmm. through there, but I gotta get UPCs on everything. And um, I'm sure I'm sure Google and Amazon could work something out. I'm sure they can. Guys, get together on this, huh? Um, but uh, yeah, now my Chromecast is like two to three months. It might come. So, which I don't think that's going to be true. I there'll be there'll be a, I'm a sure, second revision. I'm sure they'll receive. Yeah, by the time <laughs> it comes around, there'll be a version two of it. We'll figure out what the hell this thing does. I, I just watched Home Theater Geeks today on uh, talking about it. I was like, ah, yeah, I can wait. You know, it's a cool idea. It's not that it's something I want to play with. I think there's some cool ideas that I could do, you know, again, like this. I want to do something with my work. All right. We'll get to some more awesome things in a second. Uh, I just want to give everybody a reminder. Hey, we're uh, trying to get some people on the newsletter. Hey, guys, we have a newsletter. I've actually been doing it for a while. It's just a, a quick update I try to do every week to make sure everybody knows everything going on at Sorgatron Media. Uh, right now, you can actually go sign up. All new subscribers starting today are. Uh, are going to be in a in a drawing for a free DVD. Uh, it's still sealed here. This is more for the wrestling fans, but we do have a lot of wrestling on the network, so it kind of makes sense. If you're a fan of wrestling, but you haven't been watching because it's not as cool as the 90s, I get the thing for you. It's uh, WWE's uh, Greatest uh, Stars of the 90s. It's three, at least three discs. Oh, my God. We've got Stone Cold, Undertaker, uh, The Rock, before he was a movie star, Brett the Hitman Hart. Oh, I'm sure Shawn Michaels is all over this. Mick Foley stings on this thing. What the hell? Um... So uh, go check that. Uh, again, just go to uh, sorgatronmedia.com. Even if you're uh, here in the chat at live.sorgatronmedia.com on Tuesday nights, we got a link right there uh, at the top of the page, actually, uh, Sorgatron Media in your inbox. So go there, uh, sign up there uh, so you can get all the updates on uh, when we release things, when we have stuff that isn't on the schedule, uh, and other uh, kind of updates and things upcoming. Uh, projects in progress. We had a, a, a little bit up there from uh, a, a, a documentary we were working on a few weeks ago. Uh, so go check that out. SorgatronMedia.com and click on the, the uh, Sorgatron, mail- Sorgatron Media in your mailbox, in your inbox uh, mailing list I, and sign up. I just signed up. Chilla just signed up. He wants that DVD. Oddly enough, I gotta check my you got to verify. I got to verify. Yeah, it's got the whole process. So, That's you know, cool. and, and if you don't like it, you can unsubscribe and whatever, but give it a shot. Give it a shot. Uh, I, was, I don't unsubscribe to things. Right now, my inbox has 16,519 items. <laughs> I do not delete anything. <laughs> yeah, I guess I get scared because I'm at like 75% of my Gmail. And I'm like, oh, I should start actually considering. But, you know, there's actually something. I forget if it was something that they did or something I installed. Some extension. Actually, it was probably one of their like lab things where there's a, a big things, ultra big things. And it actually like tags things that are a certain size of attachments so you can get rid of like some of the if you sent like mp3 files to somebody several years ago it's still sitting there you can go and get rid of them you know um so yeah (laughs) alex says that his mom just won a uh, kindle fire from the library just picked up today so in a way that's her awesome thing of the week (laughs) very nice go alex's mom let us know if she has any problems with that Kindle. You know what? Really, isn't the Kindle Fire? I, I said this when it came out. This is the perfect thing for grandma. This is the perfect thing for mom for a tablet that you don't have to worry about anything, right? And see, now here's the other thing that that gets me is I've actually thought it's probably going to be worth it for me sooner than later to invest in the Kindle Fire. <laughs> because so you're a prime, you're a prime customer, right? I am. I don't know about you. I, I, I'm a Prime customer. I rarely use their video on demand stuff. I've been using the hell out of it lately. I'm not a big reader of books because I don't have the attention span to read more than a web page full of information. I can do magazines from time to time, not much past that. For you to leverage the lending library, 
You have to be on a native Kindle device. Yep. Carla reads all the time, nonstop. Wait, 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 wait. Can you only lend it to the device? Can you just own the device and that opens it up for you? So I have a Windows Surface RT device. I uh-huh. have an Android device. Like I, have I have multiple iPad, iPads. a phone, and a Nexus now. Mm. Okay, so in the Kindle app, you cannot check out from their lending library. No. You have to own a Kindle. A Kindle. So I and I've considered why not just like drop the seventy bucks on the cheapest one just for access. Exactly. So that's what I'm thinking about doing. Yeah. And and some of the I think like the the original fire now is down pretty darn low. Really? I, I know there was forty dollars off of one of them last week. Hmm. Like I'm seeing all these crazy tablet devices, whether it be Amazon cheap. devices it's, or whatever. With the Nook I think just crashed in price recently because <laughs> well, nobody's and, buying it. Well, when they had such a problem, they added the Google Play Store to it. <laughs> so it, the original Nook, the, what was it, the Nook Color, had just Barnes & Noble's apps on there. Mm-hmm. And they had some, like, cut the rope, and they had yeah, some Yeah, they had, some like, Angry Birds, stuff. you know, uh, um, Shazam, I'm sure. After a while, they, they got to the point where they had to add the Google Play Store to try to sell devices. Now, Amazon has... They have their Amazon store that's not Google. I don't think they have Google Play on the devices, Mm -hmm. but they do have their own curated app store. Interestingly enough, if you're an Android user, you can add the Amazon Play Store. Hmm. So we did get one. I I did. uh, I was telling you before the show, uh, they had the XEA come out for glass uh, yesterday, I think it was. I got the update last night. Uh, by the way, don't wear these things while you're receiving an update. Just scan your retina. It, well, it about blind seared. Your retina. It about seared the the side of my head with heat. Um, <laughs> is what happened. Uh, this thing is pretty high, and you can see it's very very close to my temple. Uh, so that was fun, but I didn't want to touch it because I kind of plugged it in and just to see what happened, and 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 saw it went off and put it on my head. And I didn't want to touch it again because I almost bricked it the first night I had it. Uh, but um, yeah, kind of a kind of an all right update. We we got little things like I was playing right before the show. I can actually change the volume on this thing because I always thought like, oh wait, I'm the only one hearing this. And then I've been in quiet shoots like doing hangouts and stuff with my one client. And then I'll like be listening to the hangout and hear the little bump bump. I'm like, wait, I, wait, other people can hear this because I thought like mostly it's like oh it's going right in my head. You can't mm-hmm. really hear that too well. Uh, now I can actually turn that down. So if I am in a meeting but don't want to take it off, there you go. Perfect. Perfect. Um, if you, uh, you have video controls, I think it works in the CNN app, although I've never seen anything come from the CNN app that's been on this whole time. Uh, but if you take a video, if I take like a two minute video, like it did walk around the zoo the other day, right? Mm-hmm. I can actually go in and, and the volume control works the same way where you, you bring up and it's shoot and it's playing and you can actually slide forward and back and that slides you along the timeline. Oh, so very cool. really cool uh, kind of update. They also add, uh, uh, you know, uh, OK Glass, t- uh, take a note, and it will take a note, audible note, and send it as text to Evernote. Uh, make a post goes to Path. I don't have a Path account, really. I have a Path account, but, eh, you know, but I really hope that maybe down the line we can say make a post, and you can customize that to be Path, Facebook, Google+. Plus. Wouldn't it be nice if you did them all? Or, yeah, yeah. Just say, make a, I want make post to do this. And I got to imagine it will sooner or later. I mean, look how customizable the Android devices are. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is just their stepping up features little by little here. Um, I do also wonder, does that affect YouTube videos? But I don't know. Probably down. It's very awkward to play YouTube videos in this thing. But it's kind of fun to do every once in a while when I want to watch like a music video while I'm doing laundry down here. See, that, that'd be the, but that's the perfect use case. You're not going to sit there and watch a two-hour movie. I tried once. Did you? Did get crashed about a half an hour <laughs> into it. I was trying to watch the Super Mario Brothers movie, the live action one, uh, and just like kind of had it on while I was working on stuff. Where'd you load it from? YouTube. Wow, well, it was on YouTube. It had to be on YouTube. I, I haven't really played with any other sites because it just makes sense. Like, well, let's say uh, YouTube, uh, Super Mario Brothers movie, and it comes up because you have to Google it to get to it. Okay. There's no address bar. So yeah. Google is your address bar in this case. Um, also, oh, this is a really cool thing, and I was testing this one. Uh, you'd always have to say, okay, class, 
pause, wait for it. Google, pause, wait for it, and then the thing. If I just say, okay, glass, Google, what's the weather tomorrow? It will go through the process. See, so that's nice. They connected together, and a lot of people, when I when we put this on their face, they want to say, okay, glass, take a picture. And it's like, no, 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 you just say, okay, glass, and now they... That, wait for the menu to flip. Yeah, wait for the wait for it, and then it gives you the option, then you can say that thing. Now it's just like, now it's more natural. I like that. I really like that. Just that little bit I did, I was like, oh, thank you. You know, this is the thing, I, I use uh, voice on my uh, on Siri all the time. You know what I use it for? The singular, mostly, reason. Hey, uh, set a timer. Hey, set this alarm. So yeah, and I that use, is solely what I use. It is my personal assistant as far as that is concerned with my phone. It is and this debate between the two voice apps? I use them in very different ways. See, I'm horrific at remembering things that Siri so will do things. I tell Siri like, remind me when I get home mm -hmm. to put something in my bag, or remind me when I get to work. Wait, so it does locational things like that? Yes. Okay. So it, as long as you turn on that Siri has access access to locations, okay. and you have to at least put in the addresses mm -hmm. of your locations. It will actually pop up when you get there. It'll actually pop up when you get there. The other cool thing is is that if, like if I'm set, standing at the T, I can say, remember, Siri, remember that this location is where I get on the T. And it'll add a location under my address book entry. Like, this is where I get on the That's T. That's cool. Now, I, I need to play with that a little bit more because I know it connects with Remember the Milk. They had a thing, uh, article on on their blog about that. I started doing it. I was like, I don't understand how this is going to work. Um, but because Remember the Milk does the location thing. Mm -hmm. If that links up with Siri that you know I put in there, this is a work item and this is a school item and this is a home item. Um, that would be amazing if it just interfaced right through there. Now, I get it probably when I'm three houses away yeah and i get it the t comes in under the building so while i'm not all the way up at my it does it does longitude and latitude not what's the height um altitude it mm -hmm. doesn't do altitude mm -hmm. so it doesn't figure out that i'm on the 30 i'm not at the 39th we got floor the yet. x and the z but we've got the y axis <laughs> yes. yeah yeah so but it, it's it's close enough for me i can remember crossing the street mm-hmm I can get I can I can retain information for that amount of time, and that's the idea is to get this off your head <clears throat> until right. the moment where you do have to think about it. So you're within the the, the framework of that. Mm -hmm. It's perfect. And I see I see Google doing a lot with that. I see Apple doing a lot with that. Uh, Microsoft's lagging behind, but I could I could definitely see it getting to the point as as more people become hands free mm -hmm. and things becoming more conversational. Mm -hmm. So you're not waiting for menus. Speaking of smart, tell me about the Samsung smart PC I got listed here. So over the weekend, I made an impulse buy. Oh, no. What well, does a hell of an impulse buy? <laughs> well, Holy and, crap. And, and, I felt guilty of dropping the 200 on a Nexus. Well, here's the thing. So the device is end of life. It was clearanced. Okay. 40% off. Okay. And it was open boxed an additional 20%. Okay. So at that point in time, I was like, I could almost I can justify this. Okay. So I've I've I started playing around with it. I started playing around with this it for work. This is the and this is the uh, 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 Samsung Smart PC 500T. It looks yep. like. So the device I have, yep. I can actually pull. Hold on, where you at? Right there. So I can actually wait. Is this it? Pull it apart. Oh, this is it? This is it. Oh. It's a laptop and a tablet all in one. Oh, jeez. Plus, I can run full-fledged Windows apps, unlike the RT device that I have. So, so it's like you have a Surface Pro full with a keyboard. It's like I have a Surface Pro with the keyboard attachment, the difference being this runs the Atom processor. Okay. And the Pro runs like a full-fledged Okay, but still, I you're not running the RT edition. It's still lower end. You're not going right. to be running games on this, but this is going to get most of the stuff done. In uh, it, it work, so far, it's worked out perfect for anything I wanted to do. I loaded Chrome on it, which you mm -hmm. can't do on the RT. Mm -hmm. I've, I've loaded a lot of useful, useful utilities on it. I'm not going to lie. It, it is a bit sluggish, mm -hmm. but RT has come a long way with um, 8.1. Mm -hmm. And I'm expecting this t device to actually do the same. 
Okay. Samsung will be releasing their next version of this within, I think, the next month or two. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure that's why everyone was trying to now, liquidate now, the device. Show show us the, the the other side of it. Yeah, hold it up a little bit there. So so I love that you have the, its own product page on its on its on its screen. Well, I actually followed the link off okay. your notes. All right. <laughs> So really, the keyboard doesn't really have a lot of technology in it. Like that so, bottom the keyboard part. actually adds an additional two USB ports. Okay, I mean, other than there you have connectors, you have keyboard, but there's not actual running hardware in there. The the thing that I can't figure out yet, and I don't think it it, it does. I don't know if it adds to the battery life. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. I don't think it does. I don't think there's an additional battery mm-hmm. in the keyboard piece. Um, <clears throat> Now, the, the part that I was impressed with, too, was in the top part, I have micro SD card slot, additional USB port, combo headphone, microphone um, jack, a microphone mic, uh, rotation lock, power. I have H- mini HDMI, volume up and down, mm-hmm. and I have built, it has built-in stereo speakers. Wow. So, for, for like a work-type device... I mean, even if you were doing spreadsheets and stuff like that, as long as you're not gaming, I've been pretty impressed. Oh, and by the way, eight hours of battery life. Jeez. So I haven't plugged it in. I haven't plugged it in since since I left work. And we've been we've been doing tech stuff for I don't know how long now. Yeah. Since at least probably five thirty. It's twenty to eight. And I'm at 74% power. That's awesome. <laughs> so for me, like this is like a perfect work type device where I don't have to worry about, oh, what did I, what's on my MacBook? What's, what's on this device? This is going to kind of be my dedicated, hopefully, like social media slash work. I can just do what I want on it. And it's, it's, a, it's more meant for trying to get stuff done. I'm not. I'm gonna try not to load, pretty much any game. <clears throat> I don't think it could. Well, really? I loaded. Um, so the RT I loaded, uh, Halo Assault, mm-hmm. plays really well, and because I bought it out of the Microsoft Store, I could load it on here. I just wanted to see if they would actually charge me again. Going from an RT edition to a full fledged Windows edition, they didn't. That's good. So That's I, good. it's loaded on here. I, there, there's a pinball game that came on here. I, I unloaded that. Now, the one thing I will say that you definitely lose by not going with the Microsoft device is so the Microsoft Surface, whether it's the Surface Pro or RT, you get all your updates automatically through Windows Update. Really? So firmware, video drivers, everything come down just like any other patch. Yeah. It's, uh, because it's coming from them anyways. Because it's coming from them anyways. In this, I, I didn't realize till today that um, Samsung put a special app on here called the Samsung Updater. So that's how, and at least I don't have to go and search and scour their site for updated yeah. drivers. Yeah. I get, their app notifies me, but now I'm going to... But you're not even getting Windows 8 system updates? Yes. On the system? Okay, you get the general I get, thing. I get the general Windows updates from Microsoft, and, and then I get the Samsung hardware oh, and Samsung well, software sense. updates. That makes but, sense. But I, I like the Surface mm-hmm. in the aspect of I don't have to go to places to get driver updates but it's like owning a mac but okay. or an android device. well that's the thing you, you you you've upgraded to this experience that matches everybody else that's updated you know mac i get it all in one place uh, the phones the android devices mostly um so this is the way windows has always been though you've but always the, had this that is, but they're, they're the trying updater. but they're trying to reimagine themselves yeah, yeah. as this but you're gonna find and i think this is where microsoft is going to run into this it looks a lot like android doesn't it where you're going to have this fight with Samsung. You know, you're going to fight with... But Dell. at least on the Samsung yeah. device, I don't have to worry about going out to to Samsung's site to get the latest Android version. Mm-hmm. I get a notification on the device. It says, hey, we Yeah, but we that's, deployed- that's all hand shook through Samsung already anyways, because they have to sign off on the updates. Yeah. So... But, but they control the hardware. Yeah, right. I understand. But th- I guess they're more in control of the OS on those yeah, devices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
you're not receiving anything directly from Google at that point. But here, and I and I've seen it happen before, and and I did get an update today that was from from a manufacturer or whatever. I think it was the Wacom makes the the touch interface on this. Oh, it also has a stylus pen. It has the S Pen, like you see on other Samsung devices. Okay. Um, but the Wacom, I actually got the driver updates from Microsoft. So why can't Samsung submit their driver updates in the Microsoft Store? <laughs> you used to be able to. You used to get a lot of those drivers through Windows Update. I don't know if that's still the case with a lot of more general stuff. I don't know what just went off. Um, <laughs> I have all kinds of devices pinging over here. Uh, so... <laughs> Uh, I just want a one-stop shop for my updates. Yeah. I, I don't think it's too yeah. much to ask for. I think M Microsoft could figure out a way to do it. Yeah. Uh, I think they have other priorities they have to get through right now. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, so I think the monorail... Oh, no, no. Let's, let's go back around. I, I have one more glass thing I, I thought was kind of cool. Um, how about, Chilla, if you could make your own glass apps? I would like if that. you can send an email, they say, you can make a glass app. Now, I just discovered this last night. I don't, I have not terribly tested this as of yet, uh, but I did get in their site and, and poked around a little bit. I didn't get anything really signed up and working with it yet. Again, I just kind of discovered it. Uh, this is uh, silicalabs.com. Uh, they have, and I think it's under glassware here, but they have an ability, I think it's the simple wing. Actually, they've, they've done a couple other things. There, there's a meetup app. Uh, there's another app. Uh, but it, the, the Simple Wing apps are basically you take, like, say, an RSS feed and import it in so it becomes a glass app. I know, mean, you, you know, and glass apps typically are pushed information, right? right? That's why it makes sense to RSS feed. So uh, so I went in, and, and, and you can just go create your own. There, there's there's several here. Like, there's a National Ge Geographics one. Uh, there's news. Uh, there's a blog for, for this company. Uh, there's a couple other uh, hacker news. Uh, there's a couple of Google Glass uh, uh, pages. Um, now, I went in and created one, do, 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 under my apps, do, 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 and it was as easy as saying, hey, what is the thing? And actually, it's not updating. Oh, I'm not logged in yet, maybe. So, wait, you use their technology to create the app? I use their technology, and actually, here it is. It's pending approval, but I did create one for the Wrestling Mayhem show, and it was just, I grabbed the RSS feed from the site. Uh, the blog site, not the podcast itself. I don't. I don't wonder. I wonder how that would work if probably I went would through and just did like the parse it. it Let's see why not. It'll probably parse it. I, I don't know how MB3s run on this thing, <laughs> so I don't know how that works. Uh, so uh, yeah, I just put in a description, the logo. I pulled off of the, uh, the 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 audio feed. If this works, I'll make one for Awesome Cast, maybe. Uh, uh, or, you know, depending on how it works. Uh, so, but again, it's pending approval, so I don't know what all goes into that. Um, but still, if this works out, I mean, now you can make an easy app that other people can enjoy, you know. It's an easy way, you know, much like we used, you know, uh, Wizard to get an app on the iPhone for the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Now we can put all of our content accessible through glass, you know. When there's a, and, uh, and, and, Microsoft and just, just did something with, with Windows Phone for that. Where mm -hmm. they have like kind of a, a WYSIWYG, real quick, mm -hmm. real easy way to create apps. I didn't get yeah. a chance to look at look at it yet, but and there's been and there's been like app makers before for mm -hmm. Android, iOS too, where say, oh, plug in your information here, do this, put a graphic in here, and we'll ship it to the store for approval, and we split the cost or whatever. You pay pay a hundred bucks, and we'll put this in the store, and 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 whatever that deal is. Um, but. You know, it's, I mean, this is rather open. It's a nice uh, way to do it. It's, I think you're really kind of riding um, uh, uh, Simple Wings and SimpleWing.com to get directly to that part um, with, with the uh, customizable apps. I think you're riding, in the long run, you're riding their API. Like you're riding their, you know, developer token or whatever mm -hmm. the situation on the glass is going to be. Uh, so... Still, really cool idea. They really easily put, and the, the information is text and pictures at this point, right? Now, who owns the app? Do you own the app? Do they own the app? I didn't see a license agreement, <laughs> so that's a good question. Um, I think that yeah, they're just kind of curating them, and they're 
saying, hey, you can push through this, and we're creating stuff over here. Um, either way, this creates, I think it's one of those things that kind of creates, uh, hey, eventually, I bet they charge for this. I think easily, down the line, this gets charged. This becomes a service, you know. Um, maybe as they go and get reliability. Or is it to spread word of mouth? Because there's, there's a couple of launchers that I've been looking at for Android that really surprised me that, or I'm sorry, they're widget creators for Android mm -hmm. that, so they give you this creator, I think it was like 99 cents, that'll let you create pretty much a widget in their custom language. Mm -hmm. And inside their app, you can actually create your widget and they will give you in their app, it gives you the tools to then publish that widget to Google Play. Put in how much you want to charge for it. That's awesome. And you just had, you just created customized widgets that you can then sell. And it's, it's an interesting theory because it's, it's actually then driving the sales mm -hmm. of their other apps. Mm-hmm to actually be able to use that way. And in this, for a full scope of what these guys are doing, uh, they do have another app. They have Glass Fit, uh, which likes... I'm curious about that. Uh, they have a Meetup one. I tried it, but it had no Meetups coming up. I have no friends on Meetup. And it's one called Wonderbee, uh, which is uh, Wonderbee from Glass to WordPress. So I, guess something, so I guess if you're doing kind of like a tumble log kind of situation... That'd be cool. Yeah, it, it doesn't work for the way I do my WordPress, but... I can see uh, a, a reason for that, you know, like like Yins can't park. I could see, I could see that whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's something like that. Again, like that tumble. A very if I had like a visual blog kind of situation, which that's not. But I could always just throw up another WordPress and say, hey, this is going to be my glass shots blog or well, something through glass. You know, through uh, through glass. Sorgatronmedia dot com slash through glass or something. You know, I mean, but but. I don't know. It's just one of those. I'm already pushing the stuff to Google Plus. I'm already pushing stuff to Twitter. I feel like it's in enough places it needs to be for me. But I'm sure there's plenty of other use cases mm -hmm. for something like this. So, all right. What else you got on here, Chilla? Oh, I have the Easter egg. The Easter I egg. Love East I love Google what Easter eggs. What is this? So, there is a place on Google Maps, if you're on Street View in London, that you can go to. Mm hmm. And. You step inside the police, the, the phone booth, and you are inside the Doctor Who time travel. What? It's, it, I, I didn't actually get to test it from work because it wouldn't let me get there. I can't get to that actual link. This is in Google Maps, so you actually go inside, and it's bigger on the inside. What era uh, uh, deck is this? I do not know. Is this the, new, the latest one? It doesn't look familiar to me. I'm sure there's a Whovian in there that's going to tell me. Give me the link. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the link right now. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to tweet it. Um, so, yeah, that's awesome. That's an awesome little Easter egg. So I, mean, I think I think this, this kind of stuff is what peop keeps people just constantly searching around Google. Dude, I love, uh, we, we talked about Twitter a little bit earlier. I, I love that they went in, you can actually go in and tour the studio. You know, mm -hmm. uh, through a little a street map thing they did. Or, I mean, I love just little Easter eggs like uh, the Mattress Factory when they knew the car was coming by. They had like a marching band and all this stuff going back that back alley where they're at. Mm -hmm. I mean, that that little stuff. Like, you, you, yeah, Google Maps, like, the, there's this wonderment with Google, you know, just like the Meet the Teams picture that we talked about last week with AJ that blew mm -hmm. his mind, you know. Uh, I mean, that, that, there's this sense of play with Google in all their products that keeps uh, which is why we like that kind of stuff we're geeks they're geeks and other people are like oh look what i found it you keeps know? it fun so, to some people google maps is how you look at the world mm -hmm. you know well look there was that one going back to your you're originally talking about big bang theory and sheldon there the one season finale when the the one couple gets married they actually get married on the day that they're doing the the satellite view pictures and they actually get married on top of a building, and they put this huge heart on top of the building, and it's the the down view is supposedly of them. So I mean, there's so many people that can get involved, and then mm -hmm. it's it's that ten minutes, fifteen minutes, six <laughs> seconds, whatever you want to call of fame. I want to throw out there, Bobby F. Jane Town has clarified <coughs> this, sir Sorg. It is the newest version 
of the TARDIS interior. I couldn't get Comic Guy voice. I'm sorry. <laughs> but so it makes me wonder, like, how many other places can you go on Google Maps? And well, it's something here, Mike's saying in the chat. Uh, I love the Google Maps thing where you can explore uh, Diagon Alley. Oh, Diagon Alley from Harry Potter. From Harry Potter? Which I have actually been in where they actually filmed that scene. Nice. It is super narrow. Yeah. I mean, they make it look very, very wide. And, I mean, you can fit three people across that alley. That's awesome. That is but is it, it was, so I guess when you tour Diagon Alley on Google Maps, I'm guessing it's set like it was in Harry Potter and yeah, not yeah, in real so. life. Hmm. So, and here's actually another link from Geeks of Doom on the same uh, uh, thing. So, awesome. All right, on that note, I think we got to get out of here. Chilla, it's been awesome. Every week's awesome. Every week's awesome, exactly. We did not get to the Hyperloop or the iTunes sale on movies and collections. Uh, you now know there's a sale on movies and collections. And look up something called a Hyperloop. It's not a monorail. Right. Or is it? What's being compared to what, what's the other tube thing? Uh, the, mo what, the What tube thing? Like the concept where you like it's, they said it's a pneumatic tube, pneuma yeah. pneumatic tube, which is like a so so it's like when you go to the bank and there's that suction yeah, yeah, tube yeah, thing, exactly. it's like that. So just like that, but we pack people inside of it and it goes 900 miles an hour. That's a legit number, I think. As long uh, as it isn't as crowded as the red line, I'm fine. Was it? Is it San, Fr <laughs> San Francisco? San Francisco to L.A. in 30 minutes. It's saying, hey, if you pull it off, I, that'd be so. It would be like from here to New York City in an hour. Is that about equivalent? I think. Oh, that's even further for L.A. Uh, we got a guy in Long Beach. He can tell me how far uh, uh, San Francisco is. I, 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 like, I was told that it is obscenely far. Because you got to think, like, the top of California comes up to, like, where we're at. It's a big freaking state. Yeah, it is. For some reason, I, yeah, I, didn't, I, I have no clue. I mean, I we'll just plug it in Google Maps, see what the travel I, time is. I get is. yelled at every week, wondering why our friend in Corpus Christi can't go to Austin for a wrestling show. So apparently, I don't <laughs> know what the rest of this country's size, you know, threshold is. <laughs> Guys, it's the awesome cast again. Go check out the uh, uh, Sorgatron Media newsletter. Go sign up for that over at SorgatronMedia.com. Uh, check us out on Facebook, on Google Plus, uh, and also on Twitter at AwesomeCast. I actually uh, sent out tweets uh, tweets and posts and such uh, for most of the links that we talked about tonight. Uh, thanks to our chat room, live.sorgatronmedia.com. They've been real active tonight, real awesome tonight, so go join them 7 p.m. Eastern time. I know a lot of people join us over on Justin TV. I see there, there's been like 30 to 50 of you guys popping in and out through the night. Uh, so go uh, live.sorgatronmedia.com. If you go to sorgatronmedia.com, there's a live link right there at the top as well if you forget that sequence of events uh so thanks chilla at chilla on the twitters thank you and i am at what am i what am you I? are I at what? the button you're I'm at a whole bunch of things sorgatron.com sorgatronmedia.com i got a new post on sorgatron.com my first month with glass Oh, nice. And we have an experiment coming up i think next week we're going to do this uh i'm going to give the puppy away you're giving away puppies? I'm, no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I keep referencing the Ghostbusters 2 sequence, but mm -hmm. I think I'm the only one that remembers this, so I'm going to find the video for, for when I blog about this. Uh, no, I'm going to give it to Chachi for a week. Cool. And I hope it comes back in one piece. Uh, so. He may just not give it back. He's going to be like, I lost it. And then you're going to see all these pictures of Chachi using glass. Well, this is going to be one point. I'm going to be able to disconnect all my accounts except for my Google+. Plus. So my Google Plus stream is going to be really interesting next week. <laughs> Plus everything gets auto backed up. So there you go. Um, everybody's been been doing ASCII penises to my face via Twitter over uh, the last month. Thanks, guys. Um, I'm afraid of what's going to come back from from that adventure. But no, I wanted to see what's like. Like I I, I take it off and I'm like, oh, I, I don't have it on my head. I can't. I can't do the thing I wanted to do right now. You know, you'll be lost. I, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to be wandering. I'm just going to be like sitting here. You're going to have to do the show next week. And all these you, guys you, you'll be the in the corner, shaking and crying. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see 
how that goes. Like, here, oh, this, this chime I got. I just got a tweet. There's a penis. Thank you very much, Mad Mike from the Bronx. <laughs> guys, awesome cast. Thanks a lot for joining us. We'll see you guys next week. Uh, thanks to our awesome chat room. You have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week.